Amudim and Chazak are two organizations which seemingly serve very, very different purposes. Yet over the last few years, and more so over the last few months, we have been doing many joint events together. And we're focusing on various issues that plague our community, whether it's local issues, global issues, <clears throat> Amudim related issues of addiction, abuse, mental health, communal related issues, whatever it is, we have been joining together. People often ask, what's the connection between these two organizations? One focuses on Jewish continuity, and the other one focuses on various forms of mental health. The truth is, now more than ever, we actually have that answer. There are no sides, there are no different missions, there are no different goals. There's only one mission, to help those in need, whatever way possible, and to address the issues that affect us all. Chazal teach us that the brachas from Shemayim are measured based on achdus and unity of B'nai Yisrael. We have been taught that when we are united as one, we receive an abundance of brach. We've also been told that no lasting blessings can actually exist without bringing in the ahavka l'riyacha k'malcha to love every single person unconditionally in order for that to work. We need to do everything in our power as individuals and as a community to avoid the pitfalls of Lashon Hara, Rechilas, Machlokas, and judging others. We're constantly taught that if we follow these prescriptions, our community, the United States, Eretz Yisrael, and the world at large, will undoubtedly enjoy greater brachas from above. Tonight's gathering reflects that unity, which brings us together many community leaders, community members, community leaders, rabbanim, different professionals, but most importantly, all different backgrounds. Just a few weeks ago, whether it was from Sterot to Yerushalayim, from New York to California, Israel to Australia, we all read the same Parsha, Parshas Noach. We learned something so powerful that I need to share it here. We learned that Noah was the first human being to be called Ish Tzadik, a man of righteousness, by the Melech Malachi Amlachim himself. In conversation, we see that Hashem tells Noah how upset he is about the world's immorality and the corruption, and he's decided to destroy the world and start again. The story continues where Noah has given specific instructions of what to do, build the teva, this is the size, this amount of floors, how many animals, different types, and he's given over 100 years to get the job done. The Mepharshim explained that the hope was that perhaps people will see it, ask what's going on, do tshuva, and hopefully the world will be saved. We know how that story ends. As we come to the end of the parsha, we meet Avram Avinu for the first time. Avram Avinu is given two very, very interesting and special, unique titles. One is our father, Avram Avinu, and the other is he is considered the first member of Chal Yisrael. And these two things hold true, we still consider that till today, thousands of years later. So the question remains, if Noah was the first tzaddik, and he did his job, he did what Hashem asked him to do, he was trying to save the world, mankind, his role was very important, why is he not considered Noah Avinu? Why is he not considered the first member of the tribe? We learn in life that no matter what is going to happen, even if we think we know what the outcome is, we are never to give up hope. We are always taught that we have to do our part. Noah may have had a hundred years to build something, to warn the public, teach them, inspire them, simply stated to do whatever he can to save humanity, and not just his family, yet he remained quiet. He was not proactive. Furthermore, he never actually asked Hashem to remove that decree. With Avram Avinu, we see something very different. The Parsha uses the language of La Asos, Tzedakah, and Mishmah. Hashem commands us to do what? We need to maintain justice, mercy, and acts of kindness. When Hashem decided to destroy the two most notorious evil communities in the world, Sodom and Amoru, what did Avram Avinu do? He did all he can to persuade the one above to have a change of heart. Are we saying Avram Avinu didn't know what the result would be? It doesn't matter, he still tried. He not only tries, but he tries multiple options. Everybody, some, 50, 20, like what's going on here? 
And what's interesting is every single time he tries, he pleads for these cities, he pleads for these people. No matter what happens, Hashem responds to him in kind. He doesn't say, mind your own business. I know what I'm doing. He explains, okay, if you find X amount of people, we'll do it this way, find this, do it this way. What we see is that Avram was not only worried about the entire world, but he was worried about every single individual. So when the Pasuk says, that he did exactly what Hashem commanded, we see that's not enough. This is what set Avram Avinu apart. Avram Avinu was a wealthy person, successful, according to many, he was king-like, yet his concern was for each individual and the, not just the entire world. We've heard a lot tonight so far, and we've heard a lot over the last few weeks. And there's a lot going on in the world. There's a lot. And we have to internalize what we're seeing and what we're learning and the lessons being taught in a way that can help us grow. As Am Yisrael, there's a magic potion, which is how we have survived all these thousands of years, which is based on the teachings, the life, and the actions of Avram Avinu. More so the main tenet of him, which is Chesed. Chesed in its entirety. Be it mercy, advocacy, justice, tzedakah, any type of Chesed. Chesed is Chesed. We talk about the concept of chesed begins at home. And we see that chesed is the primary. In life, when things are stressful, is when it's easiest for us as people to lose sight of what's important. And we have to remember that these are trying times, and we'll get into it a little bit in a minute. And it's okay that we are upset by things, we're hurt. That's fine. But we have to remember that in addition to the relationship with Hashem and the relationship with people, we have to remember the relationships at home. We come home, the news was something, you're in a bad mood, something's going on. We got to take a step back and say, wait, we have to learn. Chesed begins at home. The relationships at home is where it starts and where it ends in order for us to be able to do what we do in a better fashion. If you look around, there is no community in the world that has the amount of chesed, gemilas chasadim, organizations, organizations that help multiple organizations like we just heard from daily giving. There is nothing like Am Yisrael. This doesn't apply only in Queens, New York, the US, Eretz Yisrael, it's globally. We are a nation of chesed. And that is the secret to our survival. The value of chesed that comes out of Klai Yisrael is extremely disproportionate to the numbers of people in Klai Yisrael. But we remember we are the children of Avram Avinu. And as Klai Yisrael, as a group, we care not only about ourselves, but about all of humanity, down to the individual who's downtrodden. This is the recipe to keep us going. We talk about tzedakah, tzedkis, tzaddik. We talk about righteousness, which is very important. Yet we see that Noah, who was an ish tzaddik, which is very, very important, but was not what we consider an ish chesed. We're living in unprecedented times between what's going on in Eretz Yisrael, anti-Semitic attacks around the world and at home, and none of us can make sense of it. We can't. Realistically speaking, I'm sure if we ask every person in this room, within two degrees of separation, everyone is directly impacted by what's going on in Israel right now. I can speak for myself. I have a nephew in the army. We have the entire Amudim Israel staff that we're worried about. And we're all struggling. It's not easy. And to this, we say, it's okay not to be okay. We're all human. We have emotions, we feel. 
But we also need to be strong enough to know when to ask for help. No one should struggle alone. Usually the speeches I give are more about specific issues, whether it's abuse, addiction, mental health issues, various communities, but the message is always the same. Be strong and ask for help. I say this proudly, I myself am in therapy, I go every week. Today was probably one of the most intense sessions I've had since I started therapy many, many years ago. And that's because I realized I was not okay. And that's okay, because I had who to discuss it with. My second message that I want to leave you with, and final note for this evening, is that we always have to look at the positive. In everything in life, we have to take out the good. As you just heard from Rabbi Dr. Donut and from Rabbi Meirov, <coughs> the unity in Kla Yisrael right now is something that none of us have ever seen in our life. Here at home, in Eretz Yisrael, around the world, it's simply incredible. But we have to remember those important lessons from Avram Avinu. We need to keep this momentum going so that we can benefit from the brachas bestowed upon us. I mean, look at Eretz Yisrael alone. There's no right, there's no left, there's no parties, no political affiliations. Everybody is working. Everybody. We look around here. We are one people. We're not Ashkenazi, Sephardi, Litvish, Hasidish, modern Orthodox, Reform, Conservative, Russian, Bukharian, Israeli. It makes no difference. We are one. And this is the way we need to keep it. We are Am Yisrael, proudly, a nation of chesed, a nation that cares. And when we remember this, and we keep achdus and unity together, we're able to ensure that the prophecy that Hashem told Avram Avinu, when you'll be blessed, like the Pasuk says, V'nevuchum, all the nations will be blessed. The ultimate unity, maintaining that, that's what we need to do. We need to keep this message loud and clear and live it. This way we can continue to enjoy the blessings of being Am Yisrael, and more importantly, we can continue to live with peace, harmony, until the coming of Mashiach, and be able to proudly say, Am Yisrael Chai. Thank you.